So, today <coughs> let us continue with the selection of the piles of the jacket platform. Now, here last class I have already told you that you start from basic design of similar environmental conditions and water depth. Similar environmental conditions and the other most important uh, here actually you will have to have data for <coughs> wind waves and current. So, this you try to gather from the oceanographic uh, or mid ocean data, this is called similar data and the other more important criteria is water depth. Because the water depth actually dictates the size of the platform. <coughs> now, with this you start and then you come to your uh, the basic uh, what is called the basic design configuration. Well, sometimes this is you know all this information you will find in the BOD document that is the design document. In, uh, BOD means basis of design document. Now, after this, uh, this is more or less coming from the uh, similar, similar platforms that have already been built or past experience. Now, after this, you can modify this, you revise design. from experience. And after this you do rigorous structural analysis. So, this is the procedure that you have to follow. Now, here actually you get some uh, more or less the rough configuration of the platform is uh, by now it is ready. Now, if, if you want to study the detailed design, the first thing that you have to do is, do is select pile size. Uh, this is the most important parameter by which you go about the design. That is most of the load that is coming, load is transferred to piles. So, in case of fixed structures, in ships, what is the start of your design in ships? Ships actually normally you start designing by your weight equation, weight has to be equal to buoyancy. If your weight is less than buoyancy, then the whole ship will sink. Similarly, here actually you have to find out that the pile has sufficient capacity to take care of. So, basically we will study the, these two type of pile loads will come. Pile loads will be axial, axial and shear. So, these are two loads which will be coming onto the pile and the pile should be sufficiently strong to counter your axial, axial and shear load. So, we will work out an example. So, this is your main starting point of the design. First you find out the basic configuration, then go to your foundation calculation. So, foundation ca calculation is you start from piles, this is your pile. Pile now what you have to design? So, pile diameter has to be found out, then 
you find out wall thickness. Now, what else is required? Pile, say pile selection, this is your main area of study, this is somewhat different from your ship design. So, pile selection, diameter, wall thickness, another is length, length of pile of course, this has to be decided and depth of embedment, there are so many things you have to do. So, all this you have to design. So, here actually the pile length, pile length will depend on, basically it will depend on you know, the pile penetration plus what, plus water depth. That is why I told you water depth is a very important criteria in case of jacket platforms. Plus what, there is another parameter <coughs> which is plus air gap. So, these three things have to be taken care of. That is the deck of the platform has to be raised above the maximum crest of the wave. So, all these things the engineer has to decide. So, this is the uh, criteria for going about this. Now, once this is done, then the other things will fall into place. And load, I will just tell you what are the loads. After this is over, pile design is over. So, pile design is very, very crucial in case of jacket platforms. And not only we will work out one problem. So, our piles are typically laterally loaded piles. Piles you will find, they are called deep foundations. There are other type of foundations, but I think in this class, we would not have much time in order to discuss this. They are called deep foundations and uh, you know, what I was talking about and uh, uh, yeah, this is the main structure which will transfer your load. So, pile design from here you come, the next is jacket columns. So, if it is a, um, a shallow water jacket, your main piles will be driven through the columns. So, they call a jacket column diameter. Now, please do not talk, uh, disturbing me. Now, jacket columns have to be larger than the pile diameter, but how much you will give? So, jacket column diameter at least should be be same as pile diameter. Now, this is the minimum criteria, but uh, you know, obviously you have to have certain play inside the column. So, normally you have to have if more then support, support to piles. So, this you have to think about, support to piles inside columns. <coughs> very crucial. Otherwise, there will be vibratory load coming onto the jacket. Just like your propeller vibration, then the, the, you, the, for which uh, passage of waves, you will get a vibratory load, the horizontal vibratory load. Will come. So, if more than support to piles inside columns has to be thought about. Now, this you can do by putting some clips or some concrete sleeves or grouting. So, this depends on the uh, local expertise. So, now after this pile design, you come to deck column design. So, deck columns normally they rest on piles. Now, remember these piles are not concrete piles, they are all steel piles and the tip of the pile can be as thick as 50 millimeter, that is 5 centimeter thick, that is called the pile tip. So, piles have to be driven into the soil by pile hammers. So, these deck columns are going to rest on your piles. 
So that means the pile will be has to be sufficiently strong to take care of the deck load which is coming on the piles. So anyway, so these are this is one aspect which will come. Now after this you formulate deck columns or sometimes these are called deck leg size, sizing of deck legs. And this you have to configure, but this more or less will be the same as your column diameter. So the most crucial part of the structural design is your column diameter, that is the pile diameter. So after this you go to your de sizing of deck legs, now after this you come to bracings. Bracings which what which give which give rigidity to the piles that means your jacket pile is pretty long say 100 meters 200 meters long so that means in between supports if you don't have so it is going to bend so that is the bracings which should give rigidity to two piles that has to be Thought, of, thought about. Next is underwater truss. Underwater and deck trusses. So these have to be de designed. So this is actually the sequence by which uh, the whole thing is arranged. Now this is coming to the selection of member sizes and the other thing that I have already talked about is that you come in come to this from your at this stage it should be ready with your deck layout. Now remember this you are giving to the BOD that is the basis of design. So this has already been con conveyed to the client. So this is this is very important before you venture out on this uh, underwater truss and you the final thing will be your underwater and deck trusses and the pile size. Now coming to this pile selection, the major pile loads which I have already talked about. Pile loads, what are the pile loads? Platform deck steel. Followed. Then plus the live load. So this is platform deck steel is called a dead load in civil engineering terms, that is, it is not moving. Live load is your coming from the drilling operation. Now next wind load. So wind load is very, very important in case of offshore structures because that will give rise to your overturning moment. So wind load I told you that is you have to find out the steady wind and the gust wing and not only that velocity and what is say point of application. <coughs> So this has to be how you determine point of application when wind is coming. You find out the center of pressure or center of area. So this has to be found out. Jacket, what else is there? Jacket self weight. Now this is your total weight minus the buoyancy. So buoyancy calculation you have to do. Yeah, at this stage buoyancy calculation you have to do, buoyancy uh, subtracted. Next, so we have not gone into the wave loading as regime, so extreme wave.
plus current. So, this you have to configure with point of application. So, <coughs> I am stating point of application because we have to calculate very soon we will work out a problem and you will find that you have to find out the moments. And then what is earthquake? So, these will all come from the seabed. And then you have these mudslides. Then 6 you do various combinations of loadings. So, nowadays actually you have the computer, so you create various combinations of loadings. You find out the worst case scenario. Now, pile actually you have to design from what is called the carrying, carrying capacity of pile. So, this is your Q f plus Q p. Now, this is going to vary according to the depth of the soil. So, f z a s what is this varies as z and d z. So, this is actually called pile friction force. Now, the other force that will come is your end bearing that is Q multiplied by A P. So, this is your pile equation, uh, but this is actually for vertical piles. Now, coming to the problem that we have to solve. So, here if you have a pile, so this is your this is your Q D. So, this is Q F plus Q P and Q P is going to come here. So, this is your Q into A P and this is Q F. Now, Q F is an integral because it varies according to the depth of soil. So, this is your equation you find out from 0 to L. So, this force you come from in this part. Now, here is a problem. Let us try to these things will be made clear. Suppose I give you a jacket structure like this. So, this is let us say this is idealized. Now, your wind load is coming in this direction. So, this is let us say H1. H1 is your wind load, and here you will find that you are acted upon by wave and current. Of course, here the current has been added along with the wave but current point of application may be different. So, wave plus current. Now, this you calculate and this is your mud line. So, your jacket is on a seabed. Now, seabed is called a mud line. Now, you take moments about the seabed and your lever arm that we are getting, you say that this is your Z2.
and this one you try to find out this you so now this center of application you have to find out from the center of pressure so normally for a rough guess you can find out the center of the area you can give that so z2 and then what else is required you find out this wd So, W D is equals to deck self weight. Deck self weight has to be calculated plus live load. So, this you have to find out. Sorry, you write this as W D, the deck weight. Now, there are two types of load. Can you add? Self weight is normally a static load, and the live load is a dynamic load. So, that means you have to transform live load into a, a static load. So, that is normally done by where some kind of the, you have to divide by that acceleration, or you multiply, say, your live load will be five, five times or four times your static load. So, those things you have to find out here. Now, the other portion that is here you will get your the underwater truss. So, that is called WS. So, this is jacket plus appurtenances weight. So, this is the appurtenance is the add on to your jacket. So, jacket is normally this is what I have drawn is a bare jacket, but here you will find barge bumpers, then boat landings. So, those are called appurtenances weight that is something like your uh, that is on the hull the, uh, the objects that are welded. Now, here actually the main problem is our piles are not vertical. So, you have to find out this ratio and in the problem this is given as 1 is to 5.5. This S we will discuss this is called apparent battery. Apparent battery pile. So, this is not a vertical pile. So, this is a battered pile or pile which is having a certain slant or a rake. Now, you calculate the axial load that is coming onto the pile. So, axial load will be somewhere in this direction. So, this you denote this by P max. So, P max is maximum. So, what we have to find out from this we have to find out the sectional area of the pile, pile sectional area and the pile diameter. Pile diameter is more crucial and pile length how are you going to calculate? Pile length will you have to come, come from this equation. Now, this you have already found out. Okay. So, the, the, and from this you try to find out the maximum pile cross sectional area and the pile thickness. So, this is maximum axial pile force. Now, remember your pile is having a batter, but what you have calculated is a vertical load, is not it? So, you have to transform this. So, you will get uh, at this juncture you try to uh, make a force diagram. So, this is your vertical load and there will be another load which is coming in this direction. So, that is called the horizontal load. Now, at the base you create a say so this is not going to this is going to be a parallelogram. You 
construct a force parallelogram and remember your pile this is your pile axial force and your pile shear will come along in this direction. So, this is the direction of V <coughs> or pile shear load. Now, you calculate this uh, maximum pile axial force and pile shear load from where? What is what is your data? Anyway, you try to find this out, and the other thing that is going to be of importance is platform footprint. Now I told you you select the pile <coughs> orientation and the force orientation in such a way such that you get the worst loading condition. So this is your corner piles anyway so the my diagram is Now, this is called a platform footprint. So, remember your the platform design you should not stop at the truss level, but you have also to design the base because the platform that you are de designing should have certain base area or supporting area. Okay. So, now this has to be configured at this stage, but and you will find that the conductor pipes that will come into the platform you have to make certain arrangements for fixity to the platform at this level. So, these are your conductor pipes. So, I am just uh, giving you some idea. So, this is called a platform footprint. Now, this had uh, you have to find out from where this evidently will be larger in size than at the deck level, is not it? The base area has to be greater than the uh, where I have drawn, I just not drawn a platform from the other side. So, the you can see from this diagram that means the base size is very, very large compared with the deck deck level. So, how you configure this? So, this will be influenced by pile batter. So, pile batter how you select? So, that means what you have to do is you construct a basic free body diagram. So, in static analysis first thing what you have to do is construct a free body diagram. Uh, that is what I have actually uh, in this this is actually your free body diagram. Construct a free body diagram of jacket. Now, after this what you do? Suppose you are doing static analysis, any structural engineering problem. Basic structural engineering problem is going to start with a <coughs> formulation of a free diagram where you have to find out the forces, where the forces and the moments and lever arms will be there. Now, next thing you find out sigma f, this should be equal to 0 in all the directions and sigma m you should be taken care of. So, basic free body diagram has to be constructed. Okay. Uh, that is why this footprint will come 
and from this you find out this pile better. So pile better this alpha you have to find out. pile better angle. Yeah, actually, they do not say that they, they do not say angle, they simply mention they tell you the better. So, this you have to find out from the force equations that will be coming from the free body diagram. Now, here you know, what you do is the footprint that you have constructed, you can see that the worst case scenario is going to come in this direction. that is your worst loading condition. So, this will be the direction it should come from here. So, this is the direction of H 1 plus H 2 follow. So, this you write as, so this has to be critical load direction. Now remember, so that, that means and all the piles are not going to have the same load. So pile design, pile design how you are going to do the pile design. So suppose your load is coming from one corner in the worst case scenario. So that means the worst loading will come in this pile. Say if you take your jacket, so your load is coming from this direction. So, that means the main overturning moment is being registered by this corner pile. Now, what happens to this pile? Now, those of you who are not interested, you please go. You leave the, you give your attendance, I think that sheet has come here and quit. I do not like any disturbance in the class. Now, this, um, uh, the the minimum pile force is coming going to come in this direction. So, that means you have to decide the directions of the uh, forces that are coming onto each corner pile. So, this is the worst case scenario and you find out this critical pile direction. Now, the footprint that you have drawn, so pile better angle has to be designed, your pile this is the jacket footprint or platform footprint. Well, now, what is going to happen to this? Suppose your load is coming from this direction, what is going to happen to the jacket? So, that means this jacket is going to rotate like this. So, it is trying to topple over. Now, it is the toppling thing will be done by means of the overturning moment. So, that means pile footprint is going to pile footprint is going to rotate. But once in the, you have to decide on you know, uh, which is the rotation. So, that means it is going to rotate about this arm. So, let us say that your footprint that you have seen, let us for our case here it is given as we are, we are having a square footprint. Say this is your dimension is say A. So, then what is the going to be the dimension of the diagonal? So, you make another diagram like this for footprint. So, this is your foundation rotation is going to take place. So, you tell me the diagonal length. So, uh, this is your, so if you take the footprint size, so this will be square root of a square plus a square. So, there is square root of 2 a square. So, that is going to come as 1.41 a. So, that means the whole thing is going to rotate about this. your moment arm. So, that means pile rotation is being caused by 
a force which is having a moment arm of 1.41 a. Now, so the, all these calculations on this you are, so the maximum vertical force that is coming will come at the corner right hand bottom most corner pile. So that is the critical load that is coming out here. So how do you calculate the displacement or pile displacement is D1 is equals to P1 divided by Kp, Kp is your pile stiffness that P is equal to Kx formula. So these are all simple equations. Now at the middle, so that means if you, uh, this we have taken, you are looking from this end, okay. So here this is your corner piles and this center pile is coming somewhere here. So this you say this is your D2. So D2 is the displacement coming at the center pile. So D2 is equals to, but your pile load is different. So this will be P2 over Kp. Now the piles of course you have designed with the same diameter. So all the piles will have the same diameter, but you have to design them from the worst loading condition that is the worst loading which is coming on the corner pile. So the corner pile is the most critical pile which has to be examined. But all the other piles which you are driving through the other columns, obviously you are not going to shorten the diameter, isn't it? You have, to, you, make, you have to do with the same diameter because at one time the load is coming from this direction, again it may come from this direction, this direction, etc. So you do not know. So this is the thing that is coming out here and because you are having the base rotation or footprint rotation, so this you do this as if you join all these vectors, you will get this line. So this is called plane foundation rotation. So here actually you have to be very careful because the ultimate load is being transferred to the pile foundation. So pile foundation rotation has to be very thorough. And Kp, you write this Kp as axial pile stiffness. Now we have not examined the uh, bending stiffness. So this is your axial pile stiffness. Now here, since the pile is rotating, there will be two forces. One you will find because of this say, H1 and plus H2, which is coming in this direction, the whole platform is going to shift in this. So piles will have a shear, shear force will be coming here and a toppling moment. So your shear force, you write this as VB. and you will have a rotating moment and also a vertical force which is coming will be at center of this uh, uh, 1.41, 1, 1.41 a. So this will have a moment which is going to be MB. So these are what is called the a free body diagram of your platform footprint. Platform footprint has to be carefully configured. So now you calculate how much is going to be your angle. Now in this problem that has been given, we do for mean water depth. Now mean water depth has been taken, this is, I am sorry, this is in FPS units. So I have not transferred this, so this is 160 feet and H1 has been taken as 100 kilo pounds. Now the height Z1, Z1 is height of the deck or center of pressure for wind. So wind is giving a lever arm of 230 feet and the wind and, and the wave and current is at 
say H 1 is as H 2, H 2 is 1500 kilo pounds. So, remember the wave force is more than 10 times your wind force. So, here we are getting Z 2 that is the center of uh, action of the waves is 120 feet from mud line. Now, W D is your deck weight that is 8000 kilo pounds. and uh, the structure weight that is the jacket weight is only 2000. So, you remember how important is the deck. Now, apparent battery is given as S. So, this is 8 and the A that is the platform footprint is 85 feet. So, we have taken a square footprint. Now, the first thing that you do is calculate M B. Now, M B is denoted as base overturning moment. So, what is the overturning moment? Overturning moment is simple H1 Z1 plus H2 Z2. So, this is simply H1 multiplied by Z1, sorry, this is H1 Z1 plus H2 Z2. So, how much is this? So, H1 is 100 and your Z1 is 230 plus H2 is 1500 multiplied by Z2 is 120. So, this works out to be uh, 203,000 feet, feet kilo pounds. So, that is the first thing that you calculate is the base overturning moment. Now, next is base shear. Now, all of you, you have done your free body diagram, is not it? So, how you find out base shear? Shear force. So, shear force is H 1 plus H 2. So, this will be 100 plus 1500. So, this is only 1600 kilo pounds. Now, you calculate P B. P B is the force that I have told that is coming from the um, vertical load. So, your that is the axial P B is denoted as axial force at base center. So, this is your simply your vertical load, what is that? Your deck load that is W D plus jacket load W D plus W S. So, this comes as 8000 plus 2000. I think this has been given in the problem. Yeah. So, this is only 10,000. Now, you find out the maximum axial force that is coming onto the pile. Now, you know, we will be examining what pile. So, you see the this diagram. So, this is your maximum pile force. Now, this maximum pile force is coming because of P 1. Okay. Now, you try to find out P 1 and at the, at the corner piles. Uh, that means, the piles which are at the diagonally opposite corner, so these piles. So, maximum, if your maximum pile is 
critical load direction. So, here you will find P 1. So, that is your maximum pile force. Now, diagonally this diagram if you look from this di from this direction you will find the maximum is coming here, the minimum is coming at this region at the opposite corner and the somewhere in between you are getting this D 2. Now, if you want to calculate the load on these two piles, if you calculate this as P 1, this should be how much P 2 or P 3, this should be P 3 and these two will be P 2 and P 2. Or your load is coming from the corner H 1 plus H 2 direction. So, so, now you find out P 1. So, your footprint rotation is being caused, you look into the uh, moment. So, you find out the uh, force that is causing this moment. So, P 1, P 1 is vertically will take care of P B and the moment that is causing M B. So, uh, you will find P 1 is M B divided by what? Lever arm is 1.41 A, footprint rotation, footprint rotation is, so suppose a force is here and you are taking moment or you can find out that this is, there is a couple. So, the couple divided by this 1.41 A. So, that is be a part of P 1 and the other part this we will assume equally distributed on all the four piles. So, your P 1 consists of two parts, one is coming from the moment M B and the other is coming from the axial force P B. So, now you calculate this, how much is M B? A has been given as 85. So, this you just check with your calculator. So, this will be 203000 divided by 1.41 and A has been given in the problem as 85 and P B we have calculated as 10,000, is not it? So, this is 10,000 and divided by 4. So, this should give us 4194. You just check with your calculator whether this calculation is right or wrong. But P 1 is not the axial force. Now, you try to make a larger diagram at the corner pile. So, corner pile configuration along with batter. So, you try to make a blow up here force diagram. Now, if you draw the force diagram that is coming out here, you will find that the downward force that is going to come from the pile is coming in this direction. So, this is your P max. Uh, this is what you have to calculate. Okay. Now, you have to calculate another force which is coming at right angles to the pile. Now, this is what force? This is your pile shear. So, this is your maximum axial force. And this is what maximum shear. So, these are the two forces which are going to tell me about your cross sectional area of the pipe. Now, what you have calculated from the problem is this one. But in from the problem, we have not found out P max, rather we have found out this force that is your P 1 force. P 1 force we have calculated as how much? 4 1 something. And what you have calculated? 
now the critical direction is along this that is along the diagonal. So that means you have calculated the horizontal force but not the pile shear. So this is coming as this is what this is V H. So these we have found out only P1 and V H, but you have not calculated the axial force neither the shear. So this angle you take this as 90 degrees. This is a 90 degree angle. So now you find out from geometry. So uh, what are the things that are given parameters? So pile geometry and footprint geometry will be required now. So you drop a perpendicular. Now this is denoted as S, this is called batter. draw a parallelogram of forces. So you draw a force like this. Now this, this is your, your this is the thing that you have to find out. This angle is alpha. This is called the better angle. Now you make this diagram. Now how much of P1 is coming onto the column? This is the line of action of P1. Now this angle is how much? So this is alpha, no? So this angle is alpha. So now you find out. So uh, this P max will have a contribution both from P1 and VH. Now if this, you take this as 1 and this will be, this length will be root over 2 square root of 1 plus 1 square the diagonal of the parallelogram So tan alpha is S over root 2. 
now you find out cos alpha. One plus a square p max p max. So this length, so this length you take same as all these sides of the uh, triangle. So this diagonal is how much? Square root of one plus a square. This diagonal. <coughs> so this so cos alpha is will be root two over this one. Right. So now this is how much you calculate. Now next you find out sin alpha. So this you do in your hall and from this you find out P max and V. So once we have found out P max and V our problem is solved. But this you remember you have to make two force diagram, one for the platform footprint and the other is for the corner pile. So this is simple equations. So next class we will finish this and then go to lateral loading piles. <coughs>